is just fantastic. Captain's Log, subdates 210301.3. I've pulled Crumble and put him on bridge duty until Bork is finally himself back on duty. I've decided to collect a bill and will be docking this from Bork's pay for wasting our resources on fixing him. It's been a while since we covered Shamima Begum, and there's a reason for that, because the processes that she was then going through when we last spoke of her had to play out. And with coronavirus and lockdown measures and restrictions, these processes took a lot longer. There is on this channel a playlist that currently has 10 videos. It will be 11 when this video is inserted, covering everything from February 2019 up until July 2020, because there was a lot going on. In each one I recap what she did, I also mention that she was in fact herself groomed to leave with her sister's passport, to go to Raqqa, marry someone, have kids, and then beg to come home when their utopia was annihilated. There's your recap, I'm not going to embellish any more. The part that matters is the argument over citizenship. Then Home Secretary Sajid Javid said, Nah fam, you're losing yours. This is because Shimima Begum had dual citizenship with Bangladesh and the United Kingdom. Therefore, under international law, she is not left stateless. I'd also argue since she committed crimes in Syria, it doesn't matter. The entire point of this video is to catch up with what she has been up to since July of last year, until last week when something rather interesting happened. So in July, a UK court ruled after an appeal that Shamima Begum could in fact come back to the United Kingdom to challenge over her losing her citizenship. Around this time, a number of articles started to circulate sympathizing with Shamima Begum, The Guardian more notably saying that the UK government lacked compassion, along with not shirking away from its legal obligations. More notably, they included some tweets and comments from other people, and I'm going to read a couple. From Michael Meadowcroft in Leeds, has the government no compassion for Shamima Begum? Which of us is mature and competent enough to make life decisions at the age of 15? She should be allowed to return and make her case in person, forgetting here that once her feet touched the soil, she wouldn't have to leave, because where would she go next? Dr. David Miller, two points inform my own opinion that the UK cannot and should not shirk its responsibilities in this tragic case. First, Shamima left the country aged 15 on her sister's passport. UK border control failed to detect this and thus fail to protect a minor. Second, Miss Begum can only be deprived of her citizenship if she has an alternative statehood available. In her case, that option is at the very best questionable. And finally, Rebecca Durant from Winston on Sea in some place in the past. Shamima Begum must be given a fair chance to present her case, and the court will make a decision after determining its merits. Whether or not a precedent will be set is irrelevant. We'll get to that precedent soon, I promise you all that. Because it is about whether or not members of ISIS who come from the United Kingdom should be allowed to come back to the United Kingdom, as a number of them have also lost citizenship. Two days later, an article was published by The Telegraph, written by Alison Pearson, who quite rightly pointed out that Shamima has absolutely nothing to fear from the British justice system pointing out how far politically correct and woke law enforcement has gone. For example, they don't use the term Islamist terrorism and jihadis when describing attacks by Islamist terrorists and jihadists. The instead referenced term is terrorists abusing religious motivation or adherence to Osama bin Laden's ideology which is a lot more than the original terms which were accurate enough on their own. Also, even if she was sentenced to a UK prison, they're considered breeding grounds these days. The current chief of the Metropolitan Police, Cressida Dick, when pressed on the statehood issue of Shamima Begum and whether she would be arrested or what would happen if she was made to come here, allowed to even, said that while she didn't know much about the case 
of Shamima Begum, the police would be ready. And there I am thinking, don't you need to know something first? Priti Patel, by the way, at the time, did say she was seeking to overturn the ruling in the Supreme Court. So at least at that moment, the Home Secretary had said something that, let's face it, eased the concerns of a number of us who were a tad concerned if Shamima Begum was allowed to come back to the United Kingdom solely to contest her citizenship. This argument and sentiment was supported by Bethany Haynes. Now, Bethany Haynes' father was captured by ISIS in Syria in 2013 and was in a propaganda video seen to be beheaded a year later. Bethany Haynes' view is that Shamima Begum is a ticking time bomb and pointed out that Shamima Begum still has a strong hatred of the UK and that the decision is against public safety and they don't consider the impact of their decisions. The reason many people believe this, support it, and agree with Bethany Haynes especially, is because it took Shamima having her back against the wall for her to say sorry. She didn't say sorry at first. She tried to justify the actions of ISIS in Raqqa and terror attacks happening around the world. You could attribute that to a naive and immature mind, but the words still left her mouth and she didn't say sorry for that until she had to. So the precedent this all sets, as the timeline we're going through unfolds, is that this could allow for other European ISIS suspects to come home. It is worth pointing out, the UK have brought home some citizens in the past, but they are usually orphans or young children. And we mean people that can be verified to be children and not somebody in their mid-40s pretending they're a 12-year-old child. The reason Shamima was able to contest this and successfully is because under Article 3 of the European Convention on Human Rights, it was found that the UK's Special Immigration Appeals Tribunal had failed to consider whether Shamima Begum's citizenship deprivation increased her risk of mistreatment or threats to her life. Fun fact, it was well established her life was being threatened the moment she spoke to the first interviewers that turned up, because she admitted as such in subsequent interviews. And the threat of life came from the very people she stood side by side with in Raqqa, because she was trying to get out. And they were like, but you're showing ankle. Around this time, there was also a meme doing its rounds. It was of Jess Phillips, it was a Guardian title. It was a reductio ad absurdum of a very typically cliche Labour position under Corbyn, but she didn't see the funny side because it turns out Jess Phillips doesn't know memes which got some traction in the form of a BBC article defending her, along with Jess Phillips putting out a Twitter thread complaining about the fact that this meme got some likes. And according to her, possibly an audience of millions. Well, maybe a couple thousand more from my end, but only because it's a freaking meme, Jess. You really do prove you can't take a joke. So the UK government had already announced its intention to challenge this, which meant one very important thing. Shamima Begum could not come back to the United Kingdom until the verdict of the appeal. The UK government's position is that she posed a risk to national security and that in a remote hearing, Sir James Eady for the government said, while there was some sympathy for her due to her age, she had chosen to align herself with terrorists. She did leave with intent and did align herself with violent extremists in Syria with ISIS. There is a big issue at stake here. What principle should govern a case where a person can get a fair hearing because they have placed themselves not as a result of any Secretary of State action, but where that is the result of going abroad and aligning with terrorists? Oh, and just because I want to throw them under the bus, there was a leak of the Court of Appeals draft judgment. Yeah, that's not good. That was leaked about two weeks before it was even issued, which is really, really strange. It was, by the way, sent straight to the Attorney General, and I have no idea what happened next. In August, Shimima Begum's secondary school, Bethnal Green Academy, decided because of all this publicity, perhaps they should address it by bringing in, air quotes, robust measures to spot radicalization in pupils, 
and air quotes. Spotting it is one thing, by the way, Bethnal Green Academy. Doing something to prevent it is another thing entirely, and I'm not entirely sure how you're going to spot it or do anything about it, since teachers are in current year and they have been for decades cucked. And though that's not me saying they should beat children. On August the 11th, 2020, Law Report, which is by The Times, released the full documentation and transcript explaining why Lady Justice King, Lord Justice Flo and Lord Justice Singh permitted Shamima Begum to come back to the United Kingdom. It does go into incredible lengths and explain many different laws that protect individuals' rights. And I can fully respect it. There's a reason why I can fully respect it and not be at all remotely salty. But before we even get there, there was an article done by Policy Options. As it has a maple leaf on it, let's assume it's Canadian. The United Kingdom must restore ISIL bride Shamima Begum's citizenship. A recent court ruling means Britain has an opportunity to reverse a xenophobic decision and set an example for Canada and the rest of the world. How is this remotely xenophobic? As she is, was, a UK citizen. There's nothing xenophobic about this. The article is an absolute pile of plop, but it is quite funny. So I would highly recommend if anyone wants to read anything by Ebby L. Abramson, by all means do so. It's worth a good laugh. While the appeal was going on, another person spoke up on Shamima Begum, anti-terror commander Neil Basu, with him being quoted as saying, She's the big exemplar of the problem we have of the assessment of threat and risk. She's also someone who would expect to be arrested and investigated for our activity, and nobody who has travelled there, who has said things publicly that she said should be under any illusion. My job is to assess whether she is a threat to the British public, and that is something that would involve her being investigated by counter-terrorism policing. A returning foreign fighter, or somebody who has supported a cause, has to be treated as a threat until I know otherwise. That quote is a fantastic indicator of how some higher-ups perceive this, a position I can fully respect as well. So the appeal went ahead, it went through, and we got a verdict. Would you like to hear the verdict on whether or not Shamima Begum can come back to the United Kingdom to contest her citizenship? In February 2019, the Home Secretary notified Shamima Begum that he intended to deprive her of her British citizenship on the ground that she was a British Bangladeshi dual national who had travelled to Syria and aligned with ISIL and her return to the UK would present a risk to national security. Ms Begum was at that time and still is held at a camp in Syria by the Syrian Democratic Forces. Ms. Begum appealed against the deprivation decision to the Special Immigration Appeals Commission. She also applied for leave to enter the UK in order to pursue her appeal and to avoid the risk of mistreatment. The Home Secretary refused that application and Ms. Begum appealed to SIAC against that decision as well. The result of the Supreme Court's unanimous decision is that Ms. Begum's appeal against the leave to enter decision is dismissed. Her application for judicial review of the leave to enter decision is dismissed, and her application for judicial review of SIAC's decision in her appeal against the deprivation decision is also dismissed. Oof. 